Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless as anyone can plainly see the world is in a state of decay moral economic political every way possible people are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone anyone to rescue the planet soon very soon a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance. The Prince who is to come. The Beast. The Son of Perdition. The Worthless Shepherd. The Man of Sin. The Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. Daniel 8.25 Through his cunning, he shall cause the seat to prosper under his rule and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. Revelation 13.5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. The Antichrist will have a fierce countenance, Daniel 8.23 And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. He will be extremely proud. Daniel 11.36-37 and 37. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. The Antichrist will not desire women. Daniel 11.37 He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. He will be a military genius. Revelation 13.4 So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. Revelation 13, 14 And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who is wounded by the sword and lived. Zechariah eleven seventeen. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall be completely withered and his right eye shall be totally blinded. The Antichrist will be indwelt by Satan. Daniel 8.24 His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. Daniel 9.26 
And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The Antichrist will control a one world monetary system known as the Mark of the Beast. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. There's a new effort underway to regulate every single financial transaction that occurs in this country through something called the Central Bank Digital Currency, CBDC. If that happens, we're done. They can control you with a flick of a switch. Now, what is Central Bank Digital Currency? Well, that's where all financial transactions are effectively controlled by the central bank, really by the government. So this appears to be coming in this country. Several banks have announced already that they're working with the Fed to implement a CBDC. Once again, if this happens, we're done. No more political debate. We will have unprecedented levels of regulation, of surveillance, and of control. We are starting to get a better, a more precise sense of what it means when Joe Biden brags about the strongest and most equitable economic recovery in modern history. Yesterday, some of the biggest banks in this country, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, collectively lost more than $50 billion in market value in one day. That's quite a hit. On the other hand, those banks still exist, and you can't say that for Silicon Valley Bank. As of this morning, Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, has gone under completely. That makes the second biggest bank failure in the history of this country. And it's significant. SVB financed nearly half of all venture-backed healthcare and technology companies in the United States. It also apparently held significant cash reserves for some of the biggest cryptocurrencies. And it's now gone. So the drama in the banking sector, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, has a lot of Americans concerned about how to protect their money. And of course, politicians are using that concern to their advantage as always. Several states are now trying to centralize currency with a so-called central bank digital currency, which is, by the way, not currency at all. It's software, but they're going to do it for your own good. Obviously, this is a tool of total social control. If they control your money, if they can zero out your bank account with a keystroke, then you have no autonomy. They control you. Well, in the state of South Dakota, legislators just passed a bill that would have changed the definition of money to exclude cryptocurrency, and that would put the state on a path to centralized digital currency. South Dakota's governor, Kristi Noem, the only governor we're aware of who's paying attention to this, vetoed that bill. She joins us tonight to explain why. Why did you do it? You're obviously under pressure not to veto it, but you did. Why <laughs> did you? Well, Tucker, it was the right thing to do. I became aware of this bill. It wasn't introduced until almost halfway through our legislative session. We started reading through this bill that was over 110 pages long. It was sold as an update to the guidelines of the Universal Commercial Code, backed by all of our financial institutions, our banks, as we started reading through it, we saw the section of the bill that changed the definition of currency. And essentially what it did was pave the way for a government-led uh, CBDC, and it also banned any other form of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or digital currency that existed. So for me, it very clearly was a threat to our freedom. Uh, in South Dakota, we are the session that completes its business earliest in the year. We are the first ones to really look at this bill and find out the truth of what's in it. And I did veto that bill. I'm asking my legislators to change their minds, uh, to make the right decision and help me kill this bill once and for all. But I'm telling you, Tucker, we've got the same language coming to over 20 other states. I believe it's to pave a way for the federal government to control our currency and thus control people. It should be alarming to everyone, and it's being sold as a UCC guidelines update. I find it ironic that we also are having this discussion at the same time we have banks and credit card companies talking about coding gun and ammunition uh, in a separate code so they can track it. So not only can they tie these two issues together, if the government doesn't approve of what you're purchasing, if they have the only form of digital currency out there and that is endorsed and utilized in the country, they can control how you spend that money and thus take away all your freedom. Do you think that legislators in your state understand what this bill was actually designed to do? You know, I don't 
don't know if they read it, Tucker. That's what is <laughs> alarming right. to me oh, is it was over 110 pages long, and they were told by lobbyists that they had listened to for the last 20 years that it's fine. It's just a regulation update. This is what we do is adopt federal regulations. But if you start reading it, uh, you see in there there is a redefinition of currency that it says government CBDCs are okay if they're run by the government, uh, but any other form is then banned. Uh, it is yeah. clearly a change for how people's assets are utilized. It clearly limits the freedom of people to use other forms of currency that they may choose to if it is a digital currency. And it is clearly putting power into the hands of government. If anything, we should have learned the last several years is the government can't be trusted. What does this trend toward an electronic and cashless society have to do with Bible prophecy in the end times? Scripture reveals that the Antichrist will unite the world under one religion, one government, and one united economy. Every person will be required to take a mark in order to buy or sell goods of any kind. But it has even more sinister potential. It is a perfect weapon in the arsenal of a tyrant bent on world domination. As we know from the Bible, a tyrannical ruler will govern the entire world during the last half of the tribulation period, and he will likely use technology to accomplish his purposes as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Technological advances are paving the way for fulfillment of end time prophecy. These innovations are creating the environment that the Antichrist and false prophet will need to wire this world together for their evil purposes. Even now, it is well within the range of possibility for a centralized power to gain worldwide control of all banking and purchasing. Take away cash and make everything digital, and digital currency is central bank digital currency. Obviously, you have no power whatsoever. If they don't like what you're doing, they just shut you down and you're impoverished. It just happened in Canada last winter, so we know what the consequences are, and we know why they want it. So that couldn't happen, right? Well, we may live to see the day that it does happen, and here's the latest sign that it may be happening. The number of banks and ATM machines in this country are in steep decline, far fewer than there were just a few years ago. And in some countries like Australia, they're going away at high speed. So this is not something that anyone voted on. This is something that they're just doing, whether you like it or not. So you can say we have cash, but if you can't get cash, then do you really have cash? So where's this going? That's the question we want to assess tonight. And we're going to with Catherine Austin Fitz, who has been monitoring this. She founded the Solari Report. She's also the Assistant Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, and we're happy to have her. If you put this up to a vote nationally, most people would say, no, you know, I may not use cash, but I'd like to have cash because if there's no cash, then I have no control over my life. But it seems like this could be a way to affect the same outcome without a vote. Tucker, the, the, one of the bedrocks of freedom is freedom to do financial transactions, including privately, or freedom to do where you want to do and wherever you want to do. And unfortunately, as the financial system has become more and more digital, you see more and more not only invasive surveillance, but more and more controls. You referred to Canada, a perfect example. The reality, as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive, it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us. Us. And CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and vaccine passports or digital IDs are sort of the last uh, shutting of the gate. It's hard for many people to imagine the risks here because we're so used to living with financial transaction freedom. And we don't understand that when this gate closes on us, we literally will be sitting in a system where the central banks believe that our assets belong to them and they can dictate where we can spend money and what we can spend money on. Um, the important thing to understand is central bank digital currencies are not currencies. It's a financial transaction transaction control grid, and it gives the ability for the central bankers, and they've said this publicly, the ability to not only set, set the rules centrally, but enforce the rules centrally. If you don't behave, you can have your money turned off. I think it, it's very hard for people who've grown up and enjoyed Western liberty and, and human liberty to imagine literally that we're going into a system where literally our homes, our cars, our communities become digital concentration camps. Everything you do, everything you say, 
and everything you buy is controlled and evaluated by the authorities. It's not science fiction. In China, it's a reality. From now on, citizens' lives are rated and assessed. This is what the Chinese Communist Party calls social credit. This is Richard Werner, the top academic scholar in the world on central banking. He wrote the book and did the documentary, The Princes of the Yen, about the Japanese central bank. Here he is in Malmo, Sweden, in May. The nature of the CBDC, what, what is it actually going to look like? They never talk about that. Right. Um, but I heard one European central banker tell me what it's going to look like. He saw it. He was invited to one of the old central banks in Europe that are very much promoting this. And they showed him. And, you know, he's, he's a top, um, you know, executive director of another central bank in Europe. And there's no reason to believe that he was telling me a story. Um, and he was around this, this large and would be implanted under your skin. CBDC. If that happens, we're done. So you might have missed what happened Wednesday afternoon at the Fed. But they started their CBDC. Maybe we should start having the conversation of, gosh, this looks like the mark of the beast. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image, as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. The Antichrist will control a one world government, as we read in Revelation 13:7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. And while this is all happening, the World Health Organization, that actually helped China cover up its involvement, is now trying to create a pandemic treaty among all member states. Countries will begin negotiations on a zero draft of the new pandemic accord. These discussions will be crucial for building a more effective health security architecture for the future, grounded in international law, equity, and the fundamental right to health for all people. It sounds so great. Fundamental right to, for health to all people. Well, the treaty also aims to have a greater international cooperation when it comes to pandemic response. Well, again, it sounds good on the surface. But what does that mean for our freedom? What does it all mean? Well, the Federalists summed it up this way. While the draft treaty doesn't give the WHO direct authority over the country's domestic pandemic policies, it contains numerous ruinous provisions that would push nations to adopt an authoritarian globalist mindset for handling future disease outbreaks. Joining us now is Reggie Littlejohn, attorney and co-chair of the Stop Vax Passports Task Force. Reggie has been looking into all of this for a long time. Reggie, what risks? would this pose? Laura, there are two instruments that are coming up. They're, they're being negotiated by the World Health Assembly, and one of them could even pass as soon as this May. Between the two of them, they will establish a global totalitarian biotech surveillance state that would ob obligate all of the countries who um, in the world, the 194 countries who are, are parts of, of the uh, World Health Organization, to surveil our, our citizens, and then also it would obligate us to censor any misinformation or disinformation 
Uh, so let's just uh, set aside the fact that the WHO was the main perpetrator of mi misinformation and disinformation in the last pandemic. They will have the authority to say what is misinformation and what is disinformation. And it also gives the director general, Tedros, the authority to declare uh, interventions, not just on uh, pandemics, but also on potential risks and not do it without even the, the um, authorization of the country that they would be moving into. So these are terrible, terrible things that could come to a vote as early as this May. Well, what they're trying to argue now is that, well, there's going to be a provision that preserves the sovereignty of nations that sign on to this. So everybody's freaking out for no reason. This is just about cooperating together better and having a consistent response. But given the fact that they helped cover up China's lab leak, and they just let China skate with no repercussions whatsoever for China. That leads us to conclude that this is not really about global health, but this is about global control. Absolutely. It is about global control. And what they're doing is they're using health as the instrument to instill fear in people. So you were talking about all this gain of function research and some of these, these uh, le leaks that could come out of these labs could have enormously great um, mortality rates, much greater than COVID. So they will terrify everybody into saying, oh yes, we agree, we'll just be surveilled. We agree that you have to censor all this information and all of that can be used as the platform of China's social credit system worldwide. Yeah, a global Surveillance. registry. Yeah, a global right. registry is what people are worried about with perhaps banking connected to it, movement, you're the controlling movement if you don't have a certain number of shots. Like that's ultimately their goal, I think. When the deception comes, if you're not a born again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist. They're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world and they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. The Antichrist will control a one world religion as we read in Revelation 17, 1 through 5, and verse 15. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, which is the one world false religion, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, which is the one world false religion, and of the abominations of the earth. Verse 15, Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, which is the world. There are convincing arguments for the one world religion being Catholicism, Islam, and all other religions combining, proclaiming we all worship the same God. Are we seeing any signs of a one world religion forming today? This is amazing, a very important day on Thursday. The Abrahamic family house has opened in Abu Dhabi. So His Highness Mohammed bin Zayed announced the inauguration of the Abrahamic family house.
a place which consists of a mosque, a church and a synagogue all in one place. And there's also a forum for learning and community engagement. The UAE has a proud history of people from diverse communities working together to create new possibilities. And this is one of the reasons we are so proud to be living here. The Family House tweeted that it will be a forum where people can connect, a space where people can explore and exchange knowledge and a place where people can practice faith and reflect the houses of uh, worship are called Imam al Tayyib Mosque. St. Francis Church and Moses bin Maimon Synagogue. The building was inspired following the signing of the document on the uh, human fraternity by Pope Francis and Grand Imam Ahmed Al Tayyib during the Pope Francis's visit to the UAE back in 2019. It is just the most beautiful concept to have all these places of worship in the same area. We're so proud to be from a place that has so many na- na- nationalities and a diverse mix of religions and It's not really spoken about enough, the harmony that we experience here in terms of religions. This is a visual and physical tribute to that. Nowhere else in the world, as far as I'm aware, do they have a synagogue, a mosque and a church side by side and they're encouraging it as a forum for learning. So there's a place to learn, a place to connect with other people, to learn from them, have those conversations if you want. This is truly a landmark moment resulting from Pope Francis's visit in 2019, which was also spectacular. And so it's amazing to see it come to fruition. This last day's one world religion, the great harlot of Babylon, will have great worldwide influence over peoples and nations. Eventually, the harlot, the one world false religion, will lose favor with the Antichrist, who will want to receive the world's worship for himself, as we read in Revelation 17, verses 16 and 17. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, the one world false religion, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. The Antichrist will not share the adoration of the world with the prophets and priests of the false religion, no matter how obsequious or fawning they may be. Once the Antichrist gains the world's amazed attention by his miraculous return from the dead, he will turn on the false religious system and destroy it, establishing himself as God, as we read in Revelation 13, 11 and 12. Then I saw another beast, who is the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he, the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast, who is the Antichrist, in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, who is the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed. Our world is preparing for a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world monetary system. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God.
But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.